if you try and follow the link off JD's garage, um, this is the size belt you end up with. Um, you can see it goes around here. You've got to try and squeeze it over the side. Let's just get over this one here first. We'll get it over the top of this belt here. There you go. So that's the belt there. So as, um, as you have your pipe sitting down on top of it here, you'll see there's the belt. Um, I actually got a six mil belt instead of a instead of a eight or nine millimeter belt. It's a 10 millimeter gap here. So um, as the as the pipe runs through the bottom of here, it actually leans up against it. Bit of spring tension off this spring over here. You can tighten the spring up by this wing nut, um, and then it will drive the pipe as you as you're rotating, and your plasma cutter torch will be hanging off the end here and do the cutting. So, so that's the the full assembly. You got some rollers in the front here, some mid rollers here, and some rear ones at the back. That's the full assembly for um, running a full length pipe through to do the the rotary access. Um, cutting so I did that bit there what I was going to show you with this is I have this box powered up I'm not sure if you can hear it in the background bit of a hum that you can hear there if I fire up the computer here um, and I open up open builds I'll show you in a second what I've got here I'll bring the camera right, so there you go you can see inside my electrical box here here's a quick overview of what the box is like I haven't got my um, my shielded wire yet, but I have my my two um, Y axis, my X axis, my Z axis torch on, and my torch height control um, connectors there. Internally, you'll see them. They're just empty plugs at the moment. You can see I've capped off the torch height control here, and I've capped off the plasma cutter um, cut on and off. So what they have now is they have um, they have the relay for the height control and a relay for the torch on and off. I'm not sure which one it is, but I'll, I can show you that in a second. If I hit up, if I go in here now and hit, um, I guess tool on. And I say um, plasma on, you see that light came on over there then? And if I say tool off, You'll see that goes off. So that that actual relay down there is the relay for the plasma torch on and off. And this one here is for my high controller. As you can see here, I have two two Y axis controllers. They're a little bit larger than than the um, the X and the Z axis because they're a bigger stepper motor. So you can see you can see there's um, there's the um, X axis stepper motor and beside it there that's the um, Y axis and I have two of those so there's my second one over there they do fit quite snugly in there um, I've got all this cable I've got to plumb and get it through through the beam and across um, for my for my Y axis and I'll come across the other side here then I'll run my um, run my catenary along here I've got one to manage across the back here, so all my cables will be running, cable management will be running fine through the back. But yeah, so they're a bigger controller. So you can see down there, the two Y axis controllers, one here, one there. There's Z axis, there's X axis. The X axis is the one I'm running right now for that stepper motor over there. So if I jog that um, X axis, you'll hear it actually, you'll hear the stepper motor driver run. And you'll hear, you'll see the motor run. Um, so inside the box, you have a um, power supply. This one here, as you can see, Chinese crap, but it's a 24 volt, 21 amp power supply. It's 21. They recommend 15 amp, but I got 21 amp because I'm running two Y axis drives off it, um, and the the X and the Z axis off it as well. There is a little Bluetooth charger down here, so you wire that Bluetooth charger into your into your connections on the 24 volt side of your um, of your power supply. That little Bluetooth charger, you can see the cable rolled up here. It then plugs into your into your um, ESP um, controller. You can see it down there. I have a an extra one here. So I had a few issues on the way uh, along the way wiring this whole system up my my wiring inside it, it's not un, it's not 
terrible, but at the time, it, when, I was, um, when I was working on it, it was pristine, and I was pretty happy with how it all sort of looked. But um, I had some issues with the controller. So here you can see it is here. Um, it says it's a, it's a Freenove ESP32WR00M. So not sure if it will focus on this up the top here, but it does say ESP32-WR00M-32E. Now that's not the one that they recommend on JD's garage, but I couldn't get the one off, it was Amazon, I think all these links take you to Amazon um, USA, and I'm, I'm in Australia, so Amazon Australia. Um, it took me to a bunch of different ones, and from my, from my research, this one here is the latest model. It has, a, has Bluetooth, it has Wi-Fi, you can hard wire it in via the C, um, C connector here. Um, but yeah, this one here in particular had a bit of, bit of problems with it. So they say to use a 38 pin controller. So if you count the pins up each side here, this one actually has 20 down each side. So it's a 40 pin controller. So what I didn't know was on the, um, on this, this thing just pushes into the pins on that little breakout board down there. So that breakout board down there, it has 38 pins on it. Now, if you take a close look on, um, if you take a close look on the side of it, um, just down here, you'll see one of the pins, if you can see it there, one of the pins is actually hanging off the edge. So the, the 39th, and thir 39th and 40th pin hang off this edge. The reason being is, if you look down there, you can see, actually I'll show you on this board here, you can see right there, it has, it has two, two five volt outputs and it has four grounds there. So I have one ground and one five, five volt output hanging off the edge of that 38 pin breakout board um, because it didn't need the extra extra pins plugged in there because that five volt and that ground if I put this the opposite direction of that board I then have the I then have the 3.3 volt oops, I have the 3.3 volt and the ground wire hanging off the other side of the board and if you look down here I'm not sure if you can see it in there but if you look down there there's a as a ground wire connected and there underneath this cable here there is a um, the the 3.3 volt wire is connected down there so it wasn't powering the, the control board up and I wasn't able to load anything into it so I had um, had JD's garage looking into it I had a, a friend at work who's a bit of an electronics guru looking into it um, no one could give me any feedback then I worked out myself that this board is actually a 40 pin controller once I plugged it from being too far that way to drop off the the 3.3 and the ground to plug it back this way so they were connected and leave one ground and one five volt pin out fired up straight away connected via bluetooth you can see the blue light on it down there you can see the little controller flashing away down there it's connected and without that being connected you get nothing on your on your um on your open builds controller it doesn't let you load anything doesn't let you drive anything when you actually connect this up you have to put a little jumper wire i think it's between um, pin 16 and ground which eliminates the, the emergency stop so when you're trying to program it you can't have the emergency stop in operation um, but um, that worked okay once I put the jump away in put the um, put the control in the right position did all the programming everything worked fine so as you can see in here there's, there's actually not a lot of wires involved in, in connecting this up this little Bluetooth module doesn't have very long wires on it. You can see they're, they're 24 volt. They're just sort of hanging out there a fair bit. The, it has 240 volt in from the side here. So you can flick the switch off. You can hear the whole panel shut down. You can flick that switch back on. Everything fires back up again. Has an emergency stop to stop any, any program you're running. So my next step is you can see all these, all of these stepper motor drivers down here um, 
these four pins you can see here on the edge, they're the stepper motor driver cables. So there'll be two pairs, two pairs of cables. Um, I'll grab one out of the box here, I've got a spare here. I'll show you what they look like. Sorry if that makes you feel a bit seasick, watching that wander around there in the garage, but um, you can see on the side of the, on the side of the box here, you can see it has, um, it has all these pins on the side. Um, you can see down here I have, um, I have, where is it? There it is there, power and ground in there. A plus minus, A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. They're the stepper motor driver wires. The pull up, the pull down, the DIR and the ENA and the ENA plus. That's the rest of these wires here. They're all connected into the, into the power supply. Um, I ran a bit of a, a bit of a bus down the middle here to try and connect my grounds up. There's quite a few grounds to connect up to it. So I have a common ground wired off the ground on this, um, of this um, power supply. Runs obviously goes to my 240 volt supply. It's connected to the ground in the box because there's a metal backing plate. And you see three or four grounds all connected into it there. Just to try and keep things tidy. It probably didn't need to be that big, but I can use that for other power supplies if I want to um, change this up and increase it. This box is not overly large. Um, it's a bit smaller than the one they recommend. I'll tell you the actual size of the box that I used. And if you put it all in and, and mark it all out well, it actually fits quite neat. So there's the box. It's um, 400 millimeters external by 300 external. Um, and the internal plate size is about um, 250 by 350 internally. So you can fit everything they recommend in that box quite easily. Um, when I wire these, when I wire these pins in, you can see this stepper motor I wired in here. It's not shielded cable, I'm just testing it out. There's no plasma at the moment, but you can see green and black are a pair and red and blue are a pair. You can see them plugged into that, um, into that plug right there. So these plugs just pull out. You can see them like this. You can wire them in exactly like that. Um, and you can just plug them back in anytime you need to. So that, um, that shielded cable will be, will be here probably, oh, I think Friday this week, so a week from now. That's still got to arrive. The, um, my Z access, my Z access um, screw and motor has to arrive yet, so I can wire that up on. So that should be all here this Friday. So after that, this weekend coming, not today, but this weekend coming, the whole, the whole shooting match should be up and running. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at right now. Um, like I said, there's, there's the issue I had with that um, ESP controller, so be, be cautious of that. Like I said, this is an expressive um, brand. They're the ones that originally um, designed these ESP boards, and there's a shit ton of, um, of copies that are out there right now. This is a genuine one. Um, I think on JD's garage, if you follow the link, it, it takes you to a three pack of these controllers and a three pack of the ESP breakout boards. I only wanted one of each, obviously, and then I thought I fried that one, but I actually burnt out the, um, the, the USB power supply. So the board was okay, so I actually have a spare here now in case something goes wrong. Um, but if you're gonna order one, there's the actual details in the box of what it is. There's just some of the little problems I've had right now. Like I said, this week I'll get the shielded cable, I'll wire these, I'll wire these stepper motor drivers into these pins down here, I've got to solder them in, um, which won't be hard. And then I'll mount the box and I'll disconnect all these aviation plugs here. They disconnect quite easily, they're a five pin plug. A um, little bit anal with how I set things up, you can see here, the, um, it's a five pin plug. I have the, the actual notch in this plug facing up on all of them so they fit in easy first go every time no matter which one you take out they're all wired in the same way and they obviously all face down i didn't want any water getting into this panel this is a removable panel so when i do the soldering i'll be able to solder them onto there i'll solder the tails onto them with this panel removed and then i'll wire them in um, into the box which would be pretty simple to do so um yeah so keep watching and um we'll get to the next stage of this um, plasma cutter build like I mentioned before it's quite a large one it's a meter and a half by a meter and a half 
So like 1.2, 1.2 meter plate will fit across. And I'm gonna put a um, set of rollers at the back here to feed a longer plate in as I feed it through. Just gotta wait for the, um, the water pan to be made this week, which shouldn't be too far off. Right, we're doing some wiring. Um, what I'm gonna show you today is, um, this is the cable that arrived. This is the four core shielded cable. I'm not actually sure if you can see it in the end of there at all, but um, what it does look like when you, when you peel it back is it has, um, you can see that red, yellow, white and black cores there. And you can see this, this one here, this is the shield shielded wire this is the um it's like a metal cage around the outside of the of these four cores which protects it from interference so what you do is you connect one end of this shielded wire up if you connect both ends i think on jd's garage he connects up one end to the ground and one end to the stepper motors but if you connect both ends of this all it does is act like another core and then it's unshielded so you can get interference so what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to I'm going to tin the end of these cores first. So I just give them a bit of a twist just to make sure they're nice and tight. Um, I've got this little, little jig here, just like an extra set of hands really. It, it just holds the, um, let's see if I can bring it in a bit closer for you to see it. It just holds the, there we go. All right, that's my max zoom. All right, sorry to make you seasick there, but there you can see. So what I've got here is I've got my solder iron here. It's just a Ryobi battery, um, Ryobi plus one, or one plus, whatever they call it, um, soldering iron. Um, I have some flux here. It's a flux pen, just to put a bit of flux on the end of the the core here to make sure the, the solder goes in. Now you see a lot of people making making mistakes with trying to solder their their wires together. Um, there's not much flux on there. There we go. Um, what we've got to do is we've got to we've got to actually solder it to this. Um, I don't know they call it like a military plug. I think it's called. This is a five pin one as as suggested in JD's instructions. Um, so I'm going to also put some flux on each of these pins. Um, if you, again, if you don't put flux on them, the solder will never, will never stick. Here's just some cheap solder. Got me solder iron. It's got a, a little sponge over there to keep the tip clean. And all I'm going to do is, um, I just put a dot of solder on the actual soldering iron so it actually transfers the heat better and then you just put it on there and not sure if you can see it but there's solder on that on that core there now probably not great to be breathing that fumes in from that flux there we go so the reason i'm the reason i'm pre-tinning all these is I'll pre-tin this, I'll pre-tin, I'll pre-solder the, the terminals there on that military plug. And then when you um, put the slightest bit of heat in and the two pieces melt together really easy. So that's that end sorted. So they're all done there now. Um, I'll move this out of the way. What I do here is I just get the solder Hang it off the side of my soldering iron here. You can see the end of it. Hopefully you can see the end of it sticking out there. And I hold the little military plug. Um, and I clean the end of this again so it's nice and clean. And I get a bit of solder on the soldering iron and I just, I just dot it onto each of those little pins there. If it sounds like I'm talking funny, it's because I'm holding my breath so I don't um, bounce around too much. Get a bit more on that one. Oops. There we go. 
bit on that one there too. Now you don't want to overdo it because you don't want this shit going everywhere. You just want to get enough in there. It's only got this, this tiny little pocket in there to fill this solder. So you don't want to fill it to the top because you're going to sit a, a core of a wire in there. Yeah, so hopefully you can see that there now. That's got um, solder in each one of those those pins. So then I bring this bring this back across. Um, now I've got to remember. So when I'm holding this pin from the centre, I numbered them one, two, three, four, five around the side. So my um, my ground or earth cable goes to pin five, which is this one here. Look at that, it's that easy. When you, when you do it um, the way I'm saying, it just application of the solder to the, to the um, wires is very, very simple. And now I'll just go backwards through these. So yellow is next. So I'll go to this yellow one over here. So it kind of helps if you bend the wire towards the location that you're, that you're going to solder it because you don't really want to touch it with your hands because the bloody wire or the plug gets really hot so um, bend it in there so you can sort of hold it in position and then just touch them together let the solder melt get in there you fucking idiot Hang on, make sure you get the end of it end of it clean Got a bit of extra solder under that, I need to get it off. And that didn't even go anywhere near the plug, that went underneath it. So I'll just um, move it around. I'll just take it off there for now. Clean the solder up. Get some more solder on it. That was nice and tidy. And press it in there. You got fucking thing. It's hard to get the right heat transfer on it. Um, I need to reshape the end of this. Ooh, not with your fingers, fucking dickhead. Um, get the pliers. Yeah, let's get the end of this all soldered up clean again. You can see I've had too much heat on the end of this, this yellow wire here now. I'm not sure if you can see it's got a bit of, it's kind of melted a little bit. Come on, you fucking thing, get in there. There we go. Just make sure it's not touching anywhere. No. Um, just doesn't look so good. I'm just going to put another bit of solder on the side of it. There we go. Um, so yellow. Uh, so ground, earth, yellow, white. So white is the next one, which is on top here at the moment. So I've got to get it through underneath there. Again, you've just got to bend the wire to the position you want it. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. But... Or at least understand what I'm trying to do. Pre-melt that solder. Press that one into it. Let it melt. There we go. Um, what comes next? Black. So there's black. Bring out the solder a bit. Push that cable in there. OK, 
Come on, you fuck stick. Get in there. You can understand why people make a mess of this process because it's quite fiddly. That's a bit messy, I've got to fix that up. All right, and now red is my last one. Let's get the red one done. Clean the end of the soldering iron. There we go. Oh, come on, wasn't done very well. So, do a bit of an inspection. Just check that nothing's touching in between those terminals there. And then you can see, hopefully you can see, how they sold it on there. Then I just get a bit of this um, oversized heat shrink. Because you've got to thread this thing through the hole in the side of your um, electronics box, I just thread a bit of heat shrink over the top of this. Hopefully it's not too hot to get it over there now. Just to protect all the cables, get the heat shrink, get the heat gun. There we have it. So something else just to um, split the cores, I'll show you what I do to separate the wire and get the cores out of here. Right, oh, that's, um, that's how it's looking at the moment. Got the, got the electrical box connected on the side here. Um, there you go, you can see inside it there. If I power it up. You can see again the, the two, the Y1, Y2 stepper drivers. X axis, Z axis, they're all connected through the um, aviation plugs at the bottom. Got the e-stop just here on the side. I'm thinking about putting a remote one on the opposite side. There's my power supply. There's the ESP32 controller, the Bluetooth um, power supply. So with that powered up, you can hear it's fairly, it's fairly quiet. You can hardly hear it. Um, what I'll do is, I have my plasma cutter connected to it now. You can see, this is my plasma down here. It's a um, Sigweld Easy Cut 35. It's got, it's got air connected to it. There's the little air dryer. I've got a, a proper air dryer for it. There's my um, plasma arc on trigger cable. I'm not connecting up the ground cable at the moment because I'm not actually cutting anything. You can see my torch is mounted in the, in the torch mount there. What I'll do is I'll, um, I'll see if I can leave this right here and hopefully it doesn't bloody fall off. Actually, I'll leave it like that. You'll see I'll go and, um, well first I'll, I'll show you what you do here. Um, I'll open up open up open builds here I'll connect to it you can see COM port 7 on mine is the um, Bluetooth connection you can see it connecting it says it's um, already connected up there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit torch on you'll hear it you'll hear it light up torch on and it's a plasma torch off I'll do that again with the, um, with the camera mounted here and you should be able to see my torch fire up there. All right, here we go, torch on, torch off, 
How cool is that? So we're really close to having this complete now, so I need my water table to arrive. I, I didn't I didn't manage to get the didn't manage to get the cable for my um, my Z access today, but I have tested it. I just run a cable to it so I can see it um, see it move up and down. I might have to pull it apart and free it up a little bit. It's it's a bit tight in its access. It, it'll probably come up to the top here, maybe maybe 10 mil short, 20 mil short of the top, and it gets a bit tight, and it kind of gets a bit seized up there. I don't know why. And the design of the um, of the 3D printed stuff must be a little bit a little bit out of whack. Either way, everything is mounted up there now. That's my compressor starting up. Lucky it's a silent compressor and you can still hear me. So yeah, I'll get the um, other cable tomorrow, run it through the catenary, connect up my Z-axis, get my water table mounted, and um, and this job will be pretty much done other than other than setting up a, a shelf on the bottom there to um, store some stuff on and a couple of a couple of wheels to um, to cart it around. So that's it. Job done. Welcome back everyone. Um, as you can see behind me, got my water pan in now as well. Um, I'll give you a look at that in a second. But you can see the whole assembly um, behind me. I've um, got the water pan in, got the mast on there. You can see the mast as the plasma torch runs around. The, um, the mast just sort of swings around with, with the torch cable. I'll drive that around and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You'll see the cable moving. Um, and x-axis. And then back this way on the Y. And then back across the X to where it started. There you go, that's pretty cool. Well, pretty cool in my book anyway. Um, yeah, I'll, go, I'll give you a look now at the, um, at the water pan and you can see how it's all um, set up. It's got, um, it's probably got a little bit too much clearance around the edge of it here. It's probably got, I don't know, I was, I was hoping to get it um, like right up against these bolts here, but I guess the torch position is still 50, mil, 50 millimeters away from the edge of the pan. So it didn't, really didn't need to go right to the edge, but is what it is. So um, I'll show you, I'll just disconnect this, turn off the, turn off the drive so I don't burn them out. Disconnect that. Turn off the machine here. Hit the stop and I'll show you around the pan and around the um, table. All right, there you go. You can see now, um, you can see how it's all connected now. Here's, here's my catenary with my cables running through here. I need to cut that little cable tie there and get this last um, Z-axis drive in there. Um, you can see the Z-axis is now connected. Just got to get a bit of heat shrink and cover the ends here and connect this ground. This ground's got to go down to where the other ground is. Um, although from all the electronics guys at work, they're telling me that JD's garage is incorrect. You shouldn't ground both ends of a shielded cable or it just becomes a cable. Um, and it can get continuity between here and I don't know, the electrical box. So I'm thinking of disconnecting these grounds at this end and just leaving the grounds of the shielded cables connected to the earth bar or the ground bar in the in the electronic box so if anyone knows a bit more about that just um they need to explain it to me the guys at work try to explain it to me but i'm a little bit electrically dumb so smart enough to work this stuff out but um there's obviously always something better you can do so you can see there's my pan um stainless steel it's um what did it end up being it ended up being um uh, 1350 long end up being like 12 12 30 or something across um, I just put a standard um, I had a dimple dyed into the middle here and I put a standard um, sink drain in there like a vanity or a bathroom um, vanity sink plug so it can sort of stay flush and low so all the water can escape when you drain it when I it's really just to keep all the, all the metal particles and stuff out of there. So um, hopefully I'll open this up. It'll drain the liquid out. But underneath here, 
you'll see if I go underneath. Underneath you'll see I've also got a drain, a main drain valve here. So to actually drain it, I'll have to open this valve. Which way does it open? This way, down. Um, and that is 35 millimetres. It's probably, what's that, probably inch and a half or something. Um, in pipe size, so this is just sitting here now. So when I put, when I actually put the um, the shelf down here, I'm going to get a a um, I don't know some sort of water container or or um, or bin for the to catch the water and like a little recirc pump so I can send it back up to the top when I need to. Um, yeah, that's probably what I'm planning on doing. Um, but yeah, at the moment my plasma is just sitting down here. The torch turns on like I showed you. That bucket's just there because I put water in the other day just to make sure this pan was sealed and I just drained the water back out and it's sealed. So yeah, I'm very close. I've just got to get the slats now. They've been ordered. Um, I could probably wait and cut them myself here, but I don't want to make a mess of this. I think I should just um, get them cut by someone else, copy the plans for it so I can recut my own later. So my slats are going to run across, across the table the short distance so I can cut them the long distance when I need to. So um, that'll be a good plan, I think. Yeah, so there we go. So as you can see here, there's the, I don't know what they call it, the mast or the cable post or whatever it is. So as the, as the, plasma, as the plasma torch runs around the table, um, the loom is kind of holding, holding the plasma torch hose and cable in there. And the reason I put it on that side was to try and keep all interference as far away from the electrical box as I could. So when I when I made these when I made the dual Y axis, I put the same size hole in both sides so I could actually mount that mast in here or mount it on the other side. But I thought of being so close here means the plasma cutter's got to be close to my electronics box, and I'll definitely get some interference there. So even though everything's shielded, um, I was even thinking about running a dual a dual catena, a dual cable vey here, so I could run the, the plasma torch through it. But um, it's quite simple having it just hanging there on that mast and it's very tidy. It's the only cable that's kind of visible that's not loomed up somewhere. Uh, and again, I just wanted to keep this thing as, as clean and as tidy as possible. So yeah, there's a little bit of a distant shot of it there. That's how it looks. Um, I'm really happy with it. Um, don't forget, Hit up the JD garage, JD's garage guys, get the plans off them. They have an extra large version of this now, of their little little um, plasma cutter, and it's pretty much exactly this size. Um, just my luck. Um, I, couldn't, um, I couldn't get one because they didn't have the plans ready. I didn't even know they were making them, but apparently there's a metric and an imperial version of those plans out now. So still, it's only like $45 <coughs> American, which is probably 80, 80 bucks Australian. Um, what else was I going to suggest there? Um, I tried to buy the torch height controller so I could mount it on my bo box and then control the torch height um, electronically, but JD's Garage can't send that out to Australia for some reason. They don't send anything plastic, <coughs> anything plastic or anything to Australia because they've got some stupid bloody American rule that says they got to check in for cancer causing agents and that sort of garbage but um, you can buy something from bloody Africa dug out of some tar pit by some poor kid but you can't buy something by a, from a you can't buy something from a genuine businessman in the US that's ridiculous to me I think the US government should really rethink that stupid rule I think it really really hamstrings a lot of um, export um, export items from America I think most of that crap come from around California. <coughs> Excuse me. But it um, seems to have spread everywhere over there. And um, it's really difficult to purchase something if you're in another country. Anyway, hope you enjoy that little video there. Pretty much just showed you how I assembled the whole thing. Hopefully you get these slats this week and I'll, I'll get it set up. I'll fill a water table and I'll do some test cuts.